The recipes, views, and opinions expressed in this channel are solely those of the speaker. They do not reflect, collaborate, or substitute the views and opinions of a medical health professional. Please consult a professional with any dietary concerns and inquiries prior to trying the recipes. Welcome to the channel. Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video to get my cleansing split pea stew. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you're returning to the channel, hey there. The goal of this channel is to provide you with foods that are nutritious and satisfying without breaking your calorie banks or sacrificing on flavor. <laughs> this dish that you're about to watch is high in fiber, protein, iron, calcium, vitamin A and C's that helps us glow from the inside out. So if you're going to eat this dish, get your glow on. The recipe comes from my need to cleanse through food and unfortunately the food industry often bombards us with what they say is the latest and greatest in food diets and cleansing fads. Wah, wah, wah. How many of you are overwhelmed by the constant ever-changing diet information that's out there? I don't know about you but I have both hands up. What I have found in my journey is that old wisdom never dies to deliver. This dish is infused with that old wisdom, Ayurvedic wisdom. We will talk about that later. But for now, let us jump into the dish. First things first is grab your split piece too. It's yellow in color. Place that into a mixing bowl. Now you can switch out the split peas and add like lentils or mung beans because the same soaking time will be evened out. I choose to use the yellow split peas. I think they have green and I believe black, but I've always used yellow. But first thing you need to do is make sure that you're checking for stones and debris. And once you have done that, go ahead and put some water in it. You will notice that the water does turn milky and that's absolutely fine. It does come with a strong smell, heads up. Do not worry, hang in there because that yellow pea is buttery goodness in water. After about two hours to three hours, go ahead and wash out all that milky cloudy consistency that you are seeing. The idea is to wash it until all the water is completely clean. Once your peas are completely clean, place that into a cooking pot, turn on your heat at medium heat and add about three cups of water into it and let that slowly boil until all the water is evaporated. While the split peas are cooking, go ahead and grab your beets. Now I am using yellow beets. You can change it and use red. I find that the yellow are less staining and actually kind of maintains the dish color and the variety that's needed. It's also much sweeter and actually is good. Like if you are roasting potatoes or baking potatoes in an oven, I guarantee you if you add the yellow beets, it's absolutely phenomenal. Not only that, look up the nutrients that come with the beets. I promise you, after you have eaten some beets and learned something about it, you will try a way to always add it into your dish. So go ahead and peel that out. Once you are done peeling, now we'll go ahead and chop them up into cubes. Make sure your cubes are kind of the same size because we want it to cook with the same consistency. Otherwise, you're going to have some that are absolutely cooked well and then others that are still hard, which is just not good. But try as much as possible to evenly cut them into cubes. After you have got them all cut, go ahead and wash them out. 
like you have with your other things that you do when you after you have peeled them of course and then once you have peeled them out uh, sorry once you have washed them out set them aside Go ahead and now check on your split peas. Now you are looking to make sure that all the water has evaporated. If you see my dish, I have that white gunky stuff. Usually when people are boiling, they would kind of like scheme that out of the water. I don't. I pretty much just let it be. Um, but it's up to you if you want to or not. Um, otherwise, once the water has completely evaporated out, not burnt out, but evaporated out, uh, go ahead and turn off your heat. Next, we're going to go ahead and start prepping our base herbs that we will be using for cooking the dish. First things first is cloves. I use uh, three cloves, so go ahead and grab three. If you want to reduce that because you don't like ga uh, garlic, some people says it gives them bad breath. I don't know where the people get that from, but for me, garlic is smell of garlic I love the smell of garlic so go ahead and chop that up um, or mince it once you have that go ahead and grab a handful of your cilantro um, there's those who um, will taste cilantro and think that they're tasting soap um, so you can absolutely skip this tip um, I learned that that is a genetic Thing, um, and it's not something um, where I understood it when I first heard it but um, like others who enjoy parsley I find that parsley tastes like soap to me so it could be you know we just have different genetics and dis different taste bugs on how we process things um, but go ahead and grab about uh, a handful of cilantro so this will come to about half a cup of cilantro and then go ahead and set that aside Next, go ahead and grab your Dutch oven or your cooking pot. I love using some Dutch ovens. Why? If you're one of those people who burns food, Dutch oven is your friend. Uh, the likeliness that you will completely burn a dish or completely screw it up is less to minimal. And plus, they last a very, very long time and they cook food phenomenally. So, invest in a Dutch oven. But if you do not have one, go ahead and uh, use what you have so put the garlic into the Dutch oven and into the Dutch oven you will be adding some olive oil I am using some raw organic olive oil for this dish I the raw organic olive oil is actually very robust in flavor so if you're going to be using that just keep that in mind otherwise um, I usually get mine straight from the Morocco version um, I do not use the American version and I have my reasons for that but we'll talk about that another day next go ahead and add your cumin seeds these steps are going to be a bit fast so make sure you're moving as fast as possible um, the next item that you will be adding is your garam masala so go ahead and add some garam masala into that if you noticed that my um, onion my garlics have started to kind of burn out so I had to move a bit faster and think fast on my feet uh, next I had to add uh, some garlic, sorry, not garlic, but turmeric powder. So go ahead and add that in. If you see that you're burning things, just lower your heat as much as possible. Um, to be able to avoid burning my spices altogether, I added my beets to kind of slow down the burning process or the cooking process. Um, while I, even though I had not finished putting all the spices in it, and that helped with alleviating the burning. So next, I go ahead and add my. Um, curry leaves which I need to cook a little bit on the side and stir that in and then I went ahead and added the rest of my beets into the stew sorry into the spice mix I apologize for that next I'm going to add a spice that I found out helps with gas and flagellants it's called hinge or asposida if I said that correctly um, it is something that is predominantly used in Indian dishes so because they eat a lot of vegetarian food um, it does help with that gas component and that digestion of things like beans um, raw vegetables and um, and the like so we'll be adding that into the dish
and then of course I am one who does enjoy some heat so I will be adding a bit of habanero powder to it this is an optional step if you do not want to use habanero definitely find another heat component to it or just leave it out, out altogether and then go ahead and add the water until it has completely leveled out with the beets and we're going to let that boil until our uh, beets have softened up. So while our beets are cooking, let's talk about Ayurveda and my spice for today. So Ayurveda is native to India. It is an old natural medical practice that focuses on picking the appropriate foods for your body type to help level out and balance your body systems um, by incorporating digestive timetables, spices, oils, and massage techniques in order to get a very healthy and balanced um, aura. Or would they call it chi? I think it would be called chi. Um, so it is something that I have you know books and studied about so if you want to learn more seek an ayurvedic practitioner in your area if you're in there if you're in america there's a lot of them here i don't know about any other areas but you can definitely go on the internet and you can learn all about ayurveda um, it is definitely something that helps with the internal balance and we are all about internal balance out here now my spice pick for today is the curry leaf now the curry leaf is native to india and parts of Asia. Um, I personally used to eat it in Indian snacks um, and in certain Indian dishes, but I never had much knowledge about it. So as I started to incorporate it in my meals, uh, I found out that its primary use is to treat any ailments that uh, affect your digestive tract. So things like diarrhea, constipation, decentry. Um, what I found interesting about curry leaves is that it alleviates nausea and morning sickness. So for my pregnant ladies out there, you are very welcome. Now before you try it, make sure you are talking to your health professional before you ingest it, but they say it does help with that. The other thing it does is reduce stress. Now this is extremely useful information for a person like me who works a 9 to 5 corporate job that comes with a lot of challenges and a lot of stress levels. It is essential for me to stay balanced. So I took it upon myself to incorporate it in my meals. Um, when I looked into its properties it um, and what it does in the body, it, it helps eliminate bad bacteria. Um, it's good if you are diabetic or have any eyesight problems and it's also used topically to heal things like burns or skin eruptions. In terms of origin, I already said that it is native to India but it's also found in like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh um, and through migration and spice trade stuff uh, it was introduced into the rest of the world and it is a staple in South Indian dishes. <coughs> In terms of its nutrients, um, it is rich in vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, and vitamin B2. We love, love, love the ABCs of vitamins because that means our skin and our energies are promoted with every time we ingest this spice. Um, it is also a good source of iron and calcium uh, for those who suffer from deficiencies for, uh, th like me <laughs> in this minerals. Now the curry leaf, is it the same as curry powder? Well, the answer is no. I found out that the two are not related uh, and should not be confused as one of the same. So curry powder is a mix of ground spices that are put together with ground curry leaf. So it is actually a spice even though it says curry powder. So when you are looking for curry leaves, look for the green version, the leaf itself, and do not be duped that you are actually buying curry powder, true authentic curry powder by buying curry powder. Let us return to the dish and see where we are. So once all the water has dissipated from your um, beets, you can now go ahead and um, add into it the cooked speed, please. Oh my god. Speed. Speed. Wow. Split peas. 
That's a tongue twister. Say that like 300 times and let me know how that comes out. Because I'm sure you'll be spitting peas by the time you are done with that. But go ahead and add your split peas, your cooked split peas into that. And then once you have added that, go ahead and add water as well until you've actually leveled out with this, both the split peas and the beets. Go ahead and taste it for seasoning at this point. Add in your salt at this point. Um, I usually add it typically at the beginning of the stew or at the end. It all depends on how much I'm regulating. I always watch my sodium intake, so I'm always measuring how much I'm putting into my meals. Um, so one teaspoon of salt is all you need there. And go ahead and stir that up and then cover it. Now mind you, you are not going to be cooking for that long because we've already cooked the peas and we've already cooked the beets. So um, we are just bringing this to a boil. And once we have brought that to a boil, we are going to start now incorporating um, the other item which is our spinach. Now you can actually eat this, our spinach and our uh, cilantro I apologize um, you can actually eat this without adding the spinach the spinach should be like the last thing you add to it um, but if you do not want to add any spinach to it the stew is good enough to just go with the cilantro um, and you're good to go I always add spinach to my meals because I'm always finding sources of iron um, like I mentioned I do have iron deficiency so I'm always trying to strive for iron intake with every meal I have. And if uh, once you have added this uh, the spinach, all we are trying to do is make sure that the spinach wilts. So you're not cooking that long. As long as you've got that wilted effect with the spinach, you are done. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my cleansing split pea stew. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when I post new recipes on YouTube. Please be sure to sign up on my web website, amcookingwithnamia.com, for full recipe details. You can also purchase this downloadable recipe card on my website along with any other of your favorite recipes on my channel. See you on the next video.